This is White Mountains Today on Outside. It is October, it is that time of year, and we're going to get a little supernatural on the show. We wanna know where in the White Mountains we might find um, either places that are haunted or have some supernatural stories to go along with their other stories. And for that, we've brought in the expert. He is Bob Cottrell. He's the curator of Conway Public Library's History Room. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Good to be here. And you're going to spook us, right? I am. I, I was spooked already this morning. The weather, the dense fog is mm. so incredible. Really set the tone. Yep. And the changing color of the leaves and all the leaves falling down. Uh, and historically, traditionally, this time of year, uh, since you guys are about all outside, the seasonal changes for thousands and thousands of years have led people to think different things, mm. particularly tree leaves falling and there's already what look like dead trees. And it's the idea of what happens when you die? Mm. Do you go to heaven or do you go to the other place? I know where Hans, our director, is going like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is also the story of a mile high ice cube, the glaciers mm. that came over New Hampshire. And they have a term um, that's uh, sheepback. I can't say it, it's a French term, mountain louche or something like that. Uh, but the glaciers came from Canada and they came over the rugged, rough mountains and they smoothed the northwest side. Mm. and. What happened as a mile-high glacier went on the other side of that rock? It just carved out all sorts of nooks and crannies. And, and where is that? I'm sure most of your audience knows where this is. You, you know where that is, Hans? Uh, I think I do. Okay. Um, oh, man. If you go up, you go to heaven. It's, uh, if you go up, you go to heaven. Correct. I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, I know, okay, I know a little bit about my history. I know Pastor Conway supposedly okay. Okay. Hold on a second. disappeared Hold on, a second. on the top of Mount Washington in a flame of light. This might help you a little bit. Okay. This, the stairway to heaven? The, uh, there is a stairway to heaven. There's a road to Mordor, too. Oh, wow. I, we, have, dude, we have everything in the White Mountains. <laughs> oh, Cathedral Ledge. Look at that. Okay, so Hans, yeah, you would have known that because Hans is an avid climber, so I'm sure he's done that route, but that's a perspective I am not familiar with. Because the trees have grown in. Mm. All these trees have grown in. Nice. This is Cathedral Ledge. Yep. So The Cathedral. Do you know why it's called the Cathedral Ledge? I'm about to learn. <laughs> that's the Cathedral. Okay. It's a cave that you can climb up to. And on the Clio.com uh, app, you can get on your phone, you can find yourself to the trailheads for all of these sites that I'm going to be talking about. Wow. Of course, all your, vis uh, your uh, audience knows you can use the cell phone to get to the trailhead. Do not count on it yes. when you get in the trail. Bring a map and compass. Yep. Um, this is called the prow, and uh, it's like the front of a ship and they have all kinds of wonderful names uh, but the cathedral is here and so what is scary about this um cathedral I, you know I, I don't, were there sacrifices done there at some point well, uh there could have been <laughs> um let's see what is scary about the cathedral at the base of cathedral ledge um I, I don't know. Okay, so first of all, there's this idea of sublime. And today, we think of sublime as being really relaxed and cool, sitting by a lake here in the loons and stuff like yeah. that. But in the 19th century, especially the early 19th century, there were all these young men in their 20s and stuff who came up here and they were artists. This is yes. Asher B. Durand. Okay. And he was a good friend of Thomas Cole. And Thomas Cole did a sketch of this prow with the idea of he would take sketches and then he'd go back to the studio and do paintings. And one of the things that's interesting is those sketches are now in Detroit, at the Detroit Institute of Art, but you can access them all online. Wow. So if you go there, and I think it's called Crag near Conway, 
and you'll see his sketch of this. Oh, wow. So the idea is you go up to the top and you feel this sublime sense, but sublime was actually scary. Mm. So you stand on the edge and you look down into the abyss, and it's this idea of overwhelming emotions that you can't control, created by the landscape. Right. So it's an outside type thing. But you can't have a cathedral, you can't have heaven without the other place. So this bunch of rocks that fall down. So when that glacier comes over, yeah. all the rocks, the rocks that are on this side of the mo mountain get crushed down into what they call a talus slope. And so you can see this, all this stuff that was in here between crawl, falls down in here and they're big giant rocks and stuff. And uh, this, by the way, was Conway's uh, one of New Hampshire's earliest ski slopes. Really? They did ski jumps off of here. No kidding. 1922. Huh. And so there's a lot of information you can find out about all this stuff at the library, so contact me there. But this down here was called Devil's Den, and it was actually so big you could walk into it. I have heard of that. Okay. Yep. And, uh, oh, this there's another great story. All you climbers out there, the Al this pa painting is the Albany Institute of Art in New York uh, State, and you know how New Yorkers are. They always thought this was somewhere in New York. <laughs> but some Conway, North Conway climbers saw this painting and they said, that's not New York. <laughs> that's North Conway, New Hampshire. <laughs> that's Cathedral Edge. I've climbed that. I know the name of that trail. It's wow. Wild Woman. Yep. Then they have bad dogs and they're oh. still in Saigon. <laughs> All these great trail names. I love those trails. Um, so anyway, so that's, uh, that's one of the stories. And this is another painting that was done uh, by Thomas Hill. This is at the New Hampshire Historical Society. And you can see here how big it was, the space that was in there. In fact, this one here uh, is a photograph, which again, you can find online. Um, I've done blogs about these. So if you just type in MWV history uh, and then Cathedral Edge, you'll find it. Or it's, it's linked from the, um, the Clio the, the Clio. app. And is the Clio app, you just go online and it's... Yeah. Online, your computer, your cell phone, your tablet, you whatever. Google, it's C L I O. C L I O. Yep. Uh, Thecleo.com. The all Clio. one word. Okay. And uh, this shows tourists and the guy's sitting there with a camera. Mm. And so you could go there and get your picture taken in the devil's den. Mm. And there was a guy named, uh, there was a guy who pretended like he lived there. So he was like nine to five or whatever. And all the buck wagons would come around, tourists. And uh, he would, dress up like a hermit and like he lived in there yep and then he would have like a pine torch and he would light it and he would take you back into the kind of reminds me of the, of the wolf man at Clark's yes exactly like just that. like that exactly just like that we've been talking with bob cottrell curator of the conway public library's history room so many fascinating stories of the supernatural and um also man's uh constant struggle against the wild if you want to find out, if you want to visit some of these spots on your own, you can visit theclio.com where you'll find all these historical markers and all these fascinating places that have just uh, supernatural and non-supernatural <laughs> histories. And we'll also uh, link to it on our website, whitemountains.tv, so you can go visit some of these spooky places yourself during this Halloween season. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're watching Outside.